Hello, everybody. My name is Eric Nagler, and like Scott mentioned, uh, the name of my talk is Getting Machine Learning Applications into Production Using MLOps and CD for ML. So uh, I like to start with a, a, a general statement, which is, you know, productionalizing and machine learning is hard. Um, we know it's hard because uh, I love the statistic from VentureBeat that was says 87% of data science projects never make it into production. So uh, that's about like one in every 10 pro projects make it into production, the other don't. And um, I think that's a really high number. <laughs> um, you know, what makes machine learning projects, if you're, if you're working on, on, a, on, a, on a model, what makes that different than regular software development projects? And I think one of the things to look at is to, you know, to talk a little bit about where ML apps comes from, which I think is, is fundamentally is from DevOps and maybe to try to characterize this a little bit is to start with a definition. So I really like um, Ken Mugrages. He's a principal technologist with ThoughtWorks on what his definition of DevOps is. So his definition is that it's a culture where people, regardless of title or background, work together to imagine, develop, deploy, and operate a system. And I think that this is a great definition for software engineering projects. What we want to do is we want to work together. We bring people together from both technology side and, and business to build, imagine, develop, deploy, and operate a system. Um, but you may be saying, you know, but machine learning projects are like slight, are, are, you know, have a different flavor than software engineering projects, right? You have the, you have data that you need to collect and, and find. You have um, um, different types of models, different types of training methodologies, different types of libraries that you can use to train your model. And then finally, you know, you need to interact with it. There's different APIs. How do I visually display this? What's the correct visualization tool? Do I use business intelligence, you know, how do I, how do I actually show this to my users? So to kind of, you know, um, extend this definition a little bit, I think that if we expand upon it a little bit, that a, a definition for ML ops would be that, you know, it's a culture where people, regardless of title or background, work together to imagine, develop, deploy, operate, monitor, and improve machine learning systems in a continuous way. So I think the part that we're adding on, which what makes ML ops um, unique is the involving of monitoring, making sure that our model and our application is doing what we want it to do and improvement. We know that new data is gonna come in every day. We know that new models need to be trained that give better predictive accuracy. We need to put into the process this, this continuous improvement that happens along the way. And to talk about a couple of other things, it's, it's with ML ops, it's, it's a cultural shift, just like with, you know, it's not just a technology shift where we adopt new technologies, we adopt new, new tools. It's also your, or it's also people saying, I want to actually practice this, you know, commit frequently, continuous integration, low stress deployments, product, you know, product features and are going out to production all the time. It's, as much an adoption of new technologies as is much to adoption of new practices within, a, within an organization. It's to develop, deploy, and operate. So the main data in a machine learning workflows need to be reproducible and they need to be reliable. And the code, the model, and the data all need to be kept in sync and working with each other in order to get these new models or APIs or, or visualizations or data out, to, out into production. To be and that those all need to be kept in sync with each other, and finally, it's to improve in a continuous way. So it's not a one-way process where we put a model into a production environment, people start using it, and then we say, "Okay, there's nothing else to do here." It's it, it's a continuous circle that once that model goes into production, we're able to start monitoring, collecting information, and then retrain that model on new data because there may be new patterns that our customers are using for our website or new things that we didn't think of when we trained the model originally. And the faster that we're able to iterate on that cycle, the better our current and future machine learning projects will be, will be more agile. So I like to talk about cd for ml which is, uh, stands for Continuous Delivery for, our, for Machine Learning. It's the implementation pattern that we use at ThoughtWorks to um, approach ML ops projects. And throughout this process, 
there's approximately, there's about six steps that we've modeled out. There's the model building, model evaluation and experimentation, productionalization, testing, deployment, and monitoring observability. And then the key here is, is that when we put a model into production within monitoring observability, we want to collect the metrics of how that model was performing. Did our customers do, you know, did the model predict what they were going to do accurately? If it didn't, we need to continuously improve and say, you know, is there something that we could have done better? So to briefly talk about these steps, model building is the process to which to build a model, right? We need to select the right classifier or regression model, what lot, what package we're going to use. We need to evaluate and experiment, you know, selecting, you know, down selecting from hundreds of different models, which is the one that we're going to want to use and the one that we want to put into promote to our production environment. Productionalization, so things like making APIs, making UIs around it. How do we actually take that ML model that we trained and put it into production? Testing, so integration unit, is it doing what I think it should be doing? Is it, you know, do I have contract tests? All the work you need that we do in CI around making sure that this works together. Deployment, so putting it into an environment and then monitoring observability. So is it doing what I want to do? Is it giving the right predictions? Did it go down? Did it, you know, you know, is it, you know, is it the right results I'm expecting? And one of the important things throughout this process, we want to build quality in. There are a, a couple of steps here. And throughout of them, we want to be agile. We want to react to user to user requests and feedback and we want to be able to say that all of these happen in an automated fashion and there's quality built all around them so that we don't have manual steps that we have to do to, to deploy. We want to say that anytime that we want to go live with a new model, we can go live automated and it's not a, it's not a challenge. Um, so I kind of alluded to earlier that there's um, three parts to this. There's the data, there's the model, and then there's the API code. And the thing is, is that when you have what makes it, what makes MLOps and CD4ML a little different is that you're actually orchestrating three projects at the same time. So you may not have thought of it, but you actually have three distinct projects. You have the data engineering transformations, you have the data science process, and then you have the API and user experience. So you need to keep all of these programs in sync and all of these user, you know, uh, or, or um, people working on these different projects, they all need to be working together. So what will the data engineers be doing? They'll be data processing and cleaning. They'll be doing feature feature engineering. So creating new features that data scientists or, or the API may need. And also things like, where's the best place to store it? What's the right format to store it? Do I store it in Parquet? Do I store it in a relational database, NoSQL, et cetera? Like what's the right way for consumers down the line to access this data? The data science process. So model selection, training and validation. So what's the right model? Selecting and choosing the right features and fields to increase predictive accuracy. And then parameter tuning, right? So what's the correct learning rate? What are my correct hyperparameter values? What are, you know, all the all of the tuning that needs to go into a model and scale out processing. Those are the things that your data scientists would be doing. And then finally, API and user experience. So people need to use your model and they want to, you know, what's the correct API design? How do we implement it? How do we make it scalable? And then what's the right user interaction experience? How will this be displayed on a web page? How will this be displayed in a report? Is this the right visualization to communicate what I want? And throughout this, throughout this, you know, this, this visualization talks about it um, as three different components, but realistically, we actually would like to make for, for us cross-functional teams that work together. So we don't want to say have a data engineering team working by themselves to create a data set and then they pass it over to the data science team where they may say, you know, oh, I need another three fields or this field isn't what I expected. And then they have to go back and have this back and forth cycle. You know, what we want is to create vertical slices of teams that can work on a project, on a, on a, on a CD4ML project or an MLOS project end to end. So one team would own it end to end with a cross-functional group of people working together. So in this case, what this is showing is that one group of people composed of data scientists, data engineers, API developers, and, and business owners would work together to say, we're going to deliver end-to-end -end project number one. Another team will work together and build end-to-end -end project number two, and the same thing with project number three. And the more that these teams are able to put into production, they can learn from each other and say, this is how we tackle this problem. So there is a, an amount of horizontalness in terms of sharing common ideas, sharing patterns. How do we accomplish this? How do we overcome these problems? 
but ultimately we want to say that one group, one group of one cross-functional team works together in order to build this end-to-end -end product. And then the last thing I to talk about is the technical components. So when we when we perform it, when we do a CD framework project, we want to try to touch all of these areas all on the slide. So things like reproducible model training, experiment tracking, elastic infrastructure, model serving. I'm not going to go into all of these, but these are all sort of the topic areas. But I'd like to talk about four in particular that stand out to me. One is discoverable and accessible data. Um, having discoverable and accessible data is key because you, you need the data to feed into your machine learning model and 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 all that stuff. So having some form of a of a um, like a catalog or a registry or a, a centralized location where you can discover this data and have it accessible throughout your organization for people to use is a key enabler to getting results because it enables all those teams to find that data, do training, et cetera. Uh, automated testing and quality measurements, a key to continuous delivery and, and making your model production ready is having testing to make sure is everything right if there is a problem to stop it. If you're, let's say your, your, your accuracy started to trend downward, you'd say, don't deploy this model, keep the existing model, and then the team can go in to investigate why is there something new that I didn't know about my users ahead of time? Is there a new feature that I wasn't aware of? Things like that. So making sure your testing and your quality tracking accuracy is, is, is good will enable that cycle better. Version control and artifact repository. So just like we version our code, we want to version our machine learning models. And also we want to version our data. Reproducibility is key. So let's say um, someone who said, comes to you and says, why did this thing predict in this way? If you don't have the data or you don't have the model to go back to, to say, why, why did it, why did the model think this was correct? You know, it's going to be hard to reproduce what it was in the past to actually do like a root cause analysis or debug. So controlling both your version control. So you, version controlling your code and version controlling your model and data is important to, important to the CD for ML. And lastly, continuous delivery orchestration. So being able to orchestrate all of this, these components together to put it out into production with hopefully a one-click deploy process is what you want. So basically, continuous delivery orchestration sits over all of these different technical components to say, once I'm ready to go live or an automated process or this thing happens every day, you can push it out into production and it goes out with, with no problems and no stress on your developer team and your business. So to wrap up my lightning talk, um, I like to talk a little bit about the value. So one of the things here is, is I like to say is that I think one of the over, maybe an overarching statement or overarching goal is that th what we want is with ML ops and CD4 ML is that deploying a new model is a business decision rather than a technical decision. So we should be able to say we have a new classifier, we have a new update, we have a new retraining of a model. Being able to go out to production shouldn't say we have to wait for the technical the the, the technical team to you know, make 80 changes and come up with a requirement stock. We want to say, hey, a new feature wants to go out and you want to activate it live. Hit one button, it goes out, and then it's available for users to use. And it's not, it's less of a technical decision, but rather a business decision. And then finally, ML Ops and CD for ML is a faster and more reliable way to deploy and improve model productions. It's both a culture shift and a technology shift. We want to automate everything. We want to build quality into the process. And finally, we want re repeatable and audible deployments. Um, repeatable and audible deployments so that we can push out at any time, any version, and we also can do debugging. So I believe that is my time. Thank you very much, everybody, and enjoy the rest of XCOMP 2021. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you walking through that. It's fascinating. We did have a couple of questions in the chat that um, unfortunately we're now time to address. So you're welcome to respond in the chat if you have the time.